I'm here to introduce you to our filmmaker, uh, Mr. Ralph Crowder, the third, correct? Yes. I have an honor. Yeah, I'll try to make sure I get it. Um, he is screening today for you all, uh, Hands Up, Don't Shoot. Um, give you a little background story. We actually did a screening of this yesterday at uh, Coppin State uh, in front of, it was about three high schools at the time, and the energy shift that our students, as you know, it was noon and it was a high school, you understand, on a Friday. The energy that they came in with and the energy they left with was totally different. Uh, I will say for uh, those of you all, it's an adult screen, okay? And that's not mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not for children, but it's for children if someone is going to be there to help them unpack it. When I think about your, your film, which is so powerful, and, and I think about the craft, because I'm not a filmmaker, so I have, I'm trying to sort of break it down in my head and seeing it the second time is very useful. Can you just speak about how you, you made the film and how you decided about the content in there, especially in the historical aspects. I'm still unpacking my feelings yeah. right now. And, um, I absorb feelings, energy, a lot. So I try to keep it together. Yeah, and I my face and then my chest is really holding it in. As I watch this, and it's difficult to watch thoroughly, completely all the way through. It's like for years, for centuries, it's the same thing. And, and it's like Ferguson and Baltimore. What happens to a mother who's pregnant? That child stays in beyond nine months. The child becomes endangered and mother becomes endangered as well. We are dying in the various communities because we're in a system that we really outgrown. You know, you gotta respect yourself in order to get respect. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of them don't have respect for the police force out there. Some do, some don't. Most don't have respect. They don't have respect for it. You know, so you gotta start with that. Once you get that respect from them, you give respect, you get respect. Well, I think what we got away from in the police department, they admitted themselves, it's community police. They stop looking at the young people as the ones that are the future leaders for the community. We ourselves stop looking at the young people as the ones who are, you know, the voices of the community. The respect that they gotta respect themselves to get respect. They don't respect them police out there. We we can talk about respect all day, but I think a lot of times. We can blame the child, but we gotta blame the parents too. We gotta right, blame the community. Right, right. It, it takes the village. A, a child ain't gonna learn how to tie shoes by itself. He was taught that. And this is the same thing is going on in our school systems. See, the power comes from the information. And when you're in a system that helped enslave you, you mean to tell me you think they're gonna teach you right? After 400 and some years, they didn't treat us right? You know, it's like, how is it that we are so desensitized to, to these conditions? You are the one, we are the one that need to be resurrected from out of a system that we've outgrown. It's no mistake in every city, it's the same reoccurrences as my brother just said. It's because it's a system thing. And until we rise from the grave, the gravitational pull, not the grave, not the dirt, so let's not let's, let's speaking foolish. The grave is the gravitational pull of a system that keeps us rotating and spinning at its own speed. But when you have enough trust in yourself and your God, yes. that you can create the impact to rise above the gravitational pull as it's spinning, then you'll have true resurrection. You don't need a season. Every day is your season when you understand the reason that you're in your situation. We know what's going on, but what can we do? You know, that's the, that's the, you know, what can we do about it? You know, because it seems like that word don't be heard, you know. I mean, we like, if we, you know, ride or something, or even if we um, just talk, it's, it's like it's, we just, 
don't won't don't be heard. You know, they are here and then it's in the next day it's like it's nothing, you know. It's it's just been going on from generation to generation, man. It's like um it's no care or empathy or nothing, you know, and then if we go the other route, we ain't gonna have no win, really, you know. And then when we try to be peaceful with nothing getting done, you know, so I want to know what can we do to get some kind of solution to what's going on? I think that also start with us having a conversation what does the solution look like? That's a, that's a, that's a place where we start. And um, I believe that we, we're starting to work on that solution, just having this conversation come in together to really address that as a reality. You know, because too often we desensitize ourselves. Like, yeah, people get killed every day. The um, police brutal, um, brutalize us and terrorize us regularly. I'm used to it. And we never really unpack that, that trauma. You know, so just starting right here, having this conversation together, say, let's talk, let's talk about solutions. That's something that we have um, to work on. And, and it's just not, it's not one layer. It's a complex layer of different solutions that we need to talk about. I, I'm thinking about the history as well, and I'm thinking about how we can take your film and, and get students more involved and create their own perhaps and that I think having them understand how you went through the process. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, certainly. So I am working with Sherry and Kevin and, and, the, and the team on the Baltimore Stories project to take it beyond this room, um, so to speak, for any of our, our uh, events and bring it out to uh, the students in Baltimore City and the teachers in Baltimore City, and then beyond that, even to you know the, the rest of the country. Ultimately, hopefully. Speaking as a professional that goes from school to school, all throughout city schools, teaching conflict resolution, um, a lot of teachers feel stressed, and um, they, a lot of them, how can I put this? Disconnected, feel disconnected from the youth. Don't understand them. Um, we have mental health and, and trauma within our community that we just really haven't addressed. And it's trickled down to our young people, even fourth grade. Fourth grade is like one of the hardest grade level for, for many teachers to kind of uh, maintain here in Baltimore City. I have um, two girls and um, me and my husband been going back and forth about the homeschooling. Like, we did it before, but um, it was okay, but then like the funds kind of got in the way because it was like, you know, one income. So we decided to do it again and we went forward with it. So I think um, homeschooling is probably a good solution if you can do it. It's kind of hard because we're not really giving uh, teachers enough skills on how to handle these different individuals. You got a class that's already overcrowded. They already shutting down schools. That's what they're not telling y'all. They shutting down schools left to right in Baltimore City. So the school class is already overcrowded with 30 students. 11 of them are mentally impaired. And I think, the, I think right now the teachers are not seeing the community as people who are humans, but also the students. Imagine 300 years of not reading and writing. What does that do to the genetic coding of you and I. And then that on the 400th year, okay, we're going to give them books. For certain books. See? This right here, me talking about unpacking my feelings, that's something we do for the mental health aspect of it. So, because if we don't, then we internalize that. Then it becomes this place of aggression. And when I view that young man who says, shoot me, shoot me, that is that comes from the mental the mental health attack that he went through, psychological how he felt that I can't do nothing, my hands are tied, I'm tired. That's what it's, it's many of young brothers going through that right now. I'm tired. Take me out right now. We get shot down, and all we can do is take our phones and take pictures of it and whatnot. I watch these young people on uh, the television. They on buses and old people being disrespected by young people. You can always get a video, 
but no one is standing up. It's in the genetic coding. I don't think we really paid attention to that video to the point where we noticed he saw the other pedestrians more of a human than the police did. He sidestepped. So they won't even get caught in the crossfire mm. when they shot him. Mm. So he said, let me take the steps and move more to the parking lot, whereas though nobody else get hit. He looked back. So he's seen everybody else as human more than the police seen him. Life has become too despairing. Thank you, Queen. So I just need a fix. I, 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 I'm gonna sniff this. Ugh. That way it's off after a few hours, so I need to get some more. I don't have no money. I don't have a job. I don't have education, but I got pain. So we we not even talking about that right there. So you can really start to think about the mental health, the psychological torture that this man could be going through that you can say, in my suffering right now. So until we are able to enter the communities with programs, not talk, programs, to allow people to see themselves according to the creator who created them. Because that image has been broken a long time ago. Oh, my people. Let me just first say, God is so good. Okay, let me just say that. Um, and building off of what my brother said, my brother right here, let me just say a very short story. We did not get any sponsorship to do this. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We didn't ask permission. We didn't um, do anything except respond to being called. And when I say being called, I'm talking about in that spiritual space of relationship that we all have with something higher than us. Some people, choose to look for money first and then expect to be called because money has answered. Mm -hmm. I think that we're in the position that we are right now when we walk out this library is because our priorities have been shifted and bought out. If we could just listen to who we are uniquely as human beings first and all of us have an individual calling and an assignment in our lives is really listening and standing on faith. And once you do that, miraculous things happen. So, in reference to your question, I, I, I would say that I lived that, that film. You understand, like in a real, in a real way without going through a bunch of, you know, specific situations or well, what, what I've been through personally or as a family or as a community. But that film is a part of me just like it's a part of a you, of you and everybody who has that relationship to those issues. We are uniquely tied together through all these stories and pain that we experience. And they're not only just experience of the now, these are generational experiences, like my brother said, and the DNA code. And sometimes we've been sleep so much, and that money has bought out our faith so much that we don't even tap into the power that we have to tell our own stories. And so that's, that's really, it's kind of almost like a, 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 a long answer, but I just have to be long that when you live this, it's not that hard to tell that story. Because when you stand on faith, the story is told for you. God sent those people to the camera. That's what I believe. He, he sent the examples to me to use in the film, historical references and so forth. In my own DNA code, my father is actually a a professor of history, of African studies to be specific. So that's in my DNA code too. So I've been kind of groomed around those issues. And I've been in many places, as I spoke the other yesterday, um, where my voice wasn't being heard. And so 
I listened to the assignment that was given to me because I felt the same way you expressed. I don't want to be in a position to watch this and feel like when I leave out this door, my voice is not going to be heard. My understanding of these issues are not going to be acknowledged. That is not going to happen to me, period. So I made the choice to perfect the craft of communication as much as I could do. And each one of us has a um, unique ability to tap into whatever understanding we have with these issues when we leave the door on how we individually should respond to those. And then maybe when, when I stand, you know what I'm saying, on what I do, then I can shake this brother's hand and be like, let's build. Right. Right. But I can't build with this brother unless I stand on the issue and perfect what's, what I've been called to do. I wouldn't connect with Mrs. Parks if, if I knew that I only had $25 to get to Ferguson. Oh my God. But I'm going to get there. The camera that I had was not like that. <laughs> and, and, and ironically enough, the person, I didn't even have a car to get there. It's kind of like, um, this is an opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. now, I'm, now this, whatever this is, is an opportunity. And sometimes when we build on whatever we've been called to do, these opportunities come about. But, this is the money part. Now once we've been gifted, and we have opportunity, we have to possess ownership. You understand what I'm saying? And the reason why we see these conditions outside is it's not because we're not gifted. It's not because we're not talented. Not because we're not educated. It's because we don't see our gifts all the way through. We get halfway done with our gifts that we've been granted and we sell them out to the, to the lowest bidder. Mm -hmm. And then we gotta start all over again when our gift is gone now. So I'm saying we, self-determination is a theme in this film. And that's a hard road to walk. Because it's very easy to sell yourself. Mm. It's very easy to go out here and sell some dope. That's not hard. But it's hard to walk that long, multi-marathon called freedom. And that's something that I think we lost. The value of taking ownership in our stories, ownership in our issues, and not selling our mission out to the lowest bidder. Because really when you do that, you not only sell yourself, but you sell the pain and suffering of your community. So we want to we want to wrap up to be respectful of time and also you know people have lives beyond this. Um, but I do hear some themes that I'm really thankful for this for this uh, last bit that you said. It seems like even in the process of creating the film that there's a strategy for dealing with structural racism, right? That this the, the process of um, I'm hearing themes of ownership or reclaiming that ownership, right? Once in, in, in a lot of ways, once it's already been taken from you, how to get it back. And that girl was survival. survival. You understand what I'm saying? When that brother talked about that brother who felt that way, and, man, forget it, man, mm -hmm. take me out. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we've all had some kind of feeling somewhere, sometime, some way, dealing with this stuff out here mm -hmm. and how that affects our families mm -hmm. and our children and our communities. What?
screaming, yelling for survival at this point, man. And respect. Right. You understand? And I chose this as my yell and scream. Um, so we want to thank you again for being here, being with us, sharing this, also sharing, you know, stories in this space.